able to tell you about some research we've uh, recently made and also to tell you a few stories. So, uh, please let me start with a small story. Eight months ago, after nine months of pregnancy, I was uh, with my wife in a hospital, she was giving birth, and due to post-COVID restrictions we had this situation that I couldn't go uh, to the actual uh, hospital, I needed to wait for her at reception, and uh, it was like totally stressful, I was crazy stressed out, and I did what I do when I'm stressed out, so I, I just started talking to people, and because, as I you, as you, I am game dev, I started talking about the game dev. And then I have found this uh, guy from French, uh, from France. Uh, he told me, I mean, I was uh, telling you, him about a game I'm working on. The game is like, uh, do you know uh, the stories or movies like Catch Me If You Can uh, with Leonardo DiCaprio, like uh, movies about forgers, Comments, uh, people who were uh, basically making false, uh, fake art, things like that. And I decided to bring it to the video game. And then he told me that uh, in his country, there was this uh, great famous story about a guy who was forging wine. So basically, somebody was collecting old bottles, preparing from scratch uh, labels. He was uh, using chemistry to alter the cork and then obviously he was uh, mixing some fine wines to finally uh, sell bottle as original old uh, bottle worth thousands of dollars with uh, with success he, he has done so for like more than 10 years and then suddenly uh, he was cut he was caught uh, by police because uh, he went too far he basically sold a wine a bottle of wine from a year when this wine didn't exist. And unfortunately for him, a guy who was a producer of uh, this wine was still alive, so he was caught. After this story, it was like, whoa, it, is, it was totally inspiring in two ways. First of all, if you make a game about art forgery and, or, or counterfeit, then it's like totally great idea for a few new levels. But uh, also, there was one more thing. But um, it's like, it is hard to distinguish between something that is original and something that is fake. Even if uh, somebody is a professional critic, then if we have uh, something that somebody has created, but it's basically it's, uh, it's a hard task. Especially if you are a wine taster, when basically if somebody would try wine, costing like thousands of dollars and they uh, tell like it, it like uh, tastes like shit, it, I don't want to drink it, it will be like disaster for his career. So you can clearly imagine that that is hard. And in video games we have quite often such, uh, such situation when we need, when we have something that user has created and we need to evaluate it. By the way, I have done research if it was the only case of uh, wine forgery and no it's it's like totally common and this wine is uh, exceptional Chateau Lafleur uh, 1937 it was wine during like last 30 years they have uh, sold like 29 bottles of this wine of on auctions everyone uh, each one like ten dollar ten thousand dollars but in this actual year only five bottles were, were really produced. So like 80% of it is like totally uh, fake. So let me just uh, introduce myself finally. I'm Chris Gray. I'm uh, CEO of Frozen District and I'm a game developer. Programmer, a little bit designer, a little bit CEO. And uh, our biggest product is obviously House Flipper. Uh, right now we are presenting House Flipper 2, which you can uh, play in an indie booth. Uh, house Flipper is a house renovation game, where you basically buy a ruined house, you enter it and try to renovate it, like to, to smash walls, to paint walls, to remove, remove trash. And after that, uh, you finally can sell it. 
But please imagine how hard it is to, for AI to say if a particular house is done properly or not, if it is, it is good, if it should have, should have a big price. Please imagine if you have like perfect uh, kitchen and then some, somebody, this uh, player decides uh, putting toilet in the center of it. It's really hard to find a way how to, how AI should correctly uh, evaluate something like that. And also in uh, forgery craft in the game about forgeries, the situation is similar. Things, everything like passport, ID, whatever, money can be forged in tens or thousands of different way, ways. And uh, we needed to find a way, allowing to evaluate if it is uh, good enough or player would hate us for being unfair, basically. So it took some time. Actually, it took like two years. But finally, we have quite nice solution that I'd like to share with you. But before uh, sharing, I, I would like to uh, make one word, note. What is the difference? Oh, sorry, in what games we, we could use it? So obviously, if you have a game where you are a painter and paint something, such approach is, is useful, but it is not limited to that. If you would have like hard dresser simulation, again, a new player is creating something, he can be totally ridiculous, he can be serious, he can uh, do it properly, he can try to break something. And evaluation is important. Obviously, it is not limited to simulators like hairdresser, dentist, whatever. It may be any kind of game. Actually, it could be real-time strategy when you look at the look at the map and try to figure out if it looks properly. Or uh, it could be like like this game when you where you make photographs of Pokémons. It is it is also everywhere where player use his expression, such a prose can be useful. But we need to understand that evaluation is not criticism. If you are like a critic, you need to remember who you work for. If I would write a critical review of a new Top Gun movie, uh, I would not be writing in for Tom Cruise, but for normal viewers like you and me. And in the situation of game, it is different. Because if you write a movie review, you can be just funny and say that you don't like it, and it is all right because it is your, your taste, it is, uh, it is your opinion. But in this case, it is, there is only you and player, and you need to find a good balance between being fair with player and uh, between not being too harsh because players sometimes like to see their progress and often don't like if game is too hard. So what would be our goals? First of all, as you see, simple to explain why. I mean, please imagine that you have something that is totally difficult progr uh, from programming point of view concept. Like in, in House Flipper, when we were working on Garden DLC, we, have this, we had this situation when we uh, needed to evaluate gardens to tell if garden is a modern garden or traditional garden. Garden is modern garden if it has lots of geometric shapes. So if you would look from top-down perspective on a map and there are lots of circles, triangles, then it is probably modern garden. And uh, implementing it was a nightmare because from a mathematical point of view, finding spheres, uh, finding circles on a map, uh, are you looking at points, it's, it's just complicated. But we could do that because it is very easy to explain for the user. Why so many users like mechanics like um, rock, paper, scissors? Because if they find out how it works, if they believe they understand it, then they feel clever. And who doesn't like being clever? Second thing is that our game needs to be fair. What does not mean? It's, it's hard to describe, but it's easy to give an example. I suppose that most of you have been playing uh, Beat Saber at least once in your life. Who, who knows Beat Saber? Hands up, please. Yeah, perfect. So 
just short if somebody wouldn't know, wouldn't rem remember, a Beat Saber is this ga rhythm game where you have two lightsabers and cut the cubes floating towards you. And this is like the most fair game I ever seen. They have uh, in tutorial they have told that it is important to cut it properly. So if you cut the cube in half in two parts with same size, then you have most points. And when I heard that in seen that in tutorial, tutorial, I was like, total bullshit. I, I don't believe it. I'm totally sure that they have done just on uh, collider hit that if I touch, then it, it disappears. But so, so I have done something bad and illegal. I just decompiled the code and checked uh, what is inside. Sorry. But uh, it was like, like the perfect code, like, like, like blessing. Basically, it was, uh, I learned a lot looking at it. It was like totally crazy mathematical stuff. Like they really have calculated that if you use this angle, then this is cutting surface. And now let's divide the shape of cube using this surface, which is totally hard from a mathematical point of view because it's not like one cube, it's like lots of triangles making this cube. And if you divide it to two shapes, then it is even more complicated. And then if you need to calculate the um, area, not area, the, 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 the volume of uh, both shapes, it's like uh, it's nightmare. But they have done it and they have done it well. And uh, basically player had the game they deserved. They have promised player that th this is, uh, these are the rules and uh, they were fair with players. Third thing is that it is really important for for a game to be easy to test, because uh, if uh, if we have a game when where player needs to be creative, usually usually this creativity takes time. So testing such thing usually it's like player is designing, preparing something for ten minutes, twenty minutes, maybe hour, and then you can test it. And uh, as a developer, if a game is not prepared to be really easy to test, it's like you do something for, for hour, look at result, result is wrong, AI done that, uh, tells that you have done something totally different than, than you see, and then uh, you go to your development team, somebody for development team changes one, one digit somewhere in code and tells you, oh, I, I think right now it's, it's fixed. You please, please test it. And if you don't have uh, good automatic solutions for testing such things, then you are in trouble. To be honest, in House Flipper 1, we have done it totally wrong. And uh, there was only long manual testing. And the result of it was that after a year from publishing, we discovered that there are bugs like we have this concept of buyers. So you prepare a house, you furnish it, and there are various people with various tastes that uh, may like or not like your house. Because somebody is a student and likes something small, and someone, somebody is, uh, I don't know, college professor and needs everything old and luxury and nice looking. And after a year, we discovered that in our game, there was an AI person who uh, bought every house if, this, if, this, if in this house there were a few books. So because he was a student, he, he loved books, books apparently, but it was like totally not realistic. I mean, you know how not expensive is a book and how much cost the, cost the house. So basically it was like obvious bug, but we were unable to find it for long months. And uh, the fourth goal is allowing making, adding special cases. Because when you launch a game, uh, then you, after that, you usually find out that players has done something, uh, players are doing things that you haven't predicted. So basically, um, yeah, the, 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 the easy example is what, what I have already told you, like uh, in House Flipper, when somebody can put in the, buff, in, in the dining room a toilet or somebody could uh, have like a toilet with like tons of toilet paper. And if you create AI that doesn't allow adding new special case, then you can do nothing with it. You have choice if AI should take, uh, tell, oh, wonderful uh, bathroom, I'll buy it, or uh, I don't like it at all. 
But how cool it would it be if we could add basically something like if there are tons of toilet paper, then AI could say, oh, I see that you are prepared for pandemic or, uh, or something like that. So um, let's talk about our solution. I, I'll show you the solution uh, on an example of uh, level, one level uh, of game we are working on. Uh, and uh, this level is like, you don't need to read the text, I'll tell you everything. It's like player comes to a fortune teller and uh, you may, know, may not know that fortune teller in uh, real life uh, quite often use uh, tarot cards that are uh, altered to look old. So basically there are, there are really books for fortune tellers that tells how to predict fortune, uh, I mean, uh, for in a scientific way, not for people believing it, and they just uh, have a, contains some instructions, like to make tarot cards older, you should put it in the T, or, and then uh, put it into the O, and, and then do things like that. We want player to start with something simple, so we ask him to do everything that, uh, like it, and... Uh, then basically, in game we have top-down view where you talk to people, but then when you come to desk, camera zooms in and you have actual uh, stuff that you can use as in simulation game. And uh, now, what is our solution for eva evaluating it? The first step is that we definitely need to have data in one file basically in one zip file because if we can do that then if player or tester finds mistake then we tell him okay please press our special key then f uh, folder with zip file uh, shows up and uh, you have one file that you can send to developers that contains everything that is needed to evalu evaluation and that allows you to fix the problem, and this file can be later used as automatic, thing, automatic test. So uh, you are sure that you will not uh, make uh, regression. Uh, obviously, I would like to avoid in such file like lots of numbers. I personally love images. So what we do in uh, this case, we basically have a uh, few images showing color-coded where, I mean, blue means where the cart is wet, green when is, it is burned too much, um, what is the third color? Red. Red shows scratches that player made, uh, makes with nail buffer or, or something. And then if something is wrong, we have one file that we can check. Uh, that we, this, this, one, this one file, this image in this case actually contains everything that we really use in evaluation. And uh, the next part is that, you know, images are great, but uh, they are great for us people, not for computers. So if you actually want to uh, have some real data that you could use later, you need to convert these images to, to numbers. And using code, using programming is like the worst solution for that. The, we found something way better which is using shaders. So shaders are small programs uh, working on uh, your GPU, your graphic card, and uh, pretty every game engine right now contains a visual editor allowing you to do this. So you need basically to make a visual uh, algorithm that tells that here are things that should be should have this color, these changes, and here's not. And you can actually make something that will basically output you image where red shows what is wrong, green shows what is good. So basically, our shader does what, what a teacher would do. He, in one color, mark everything that is correct, in another color, mark everything that is incorrect. And right now, we are not using like crazy images. We have like image showing what, what was right, what was wrong, and we can actually simply calculate how many red pixels, how many green pixels. It's that easy. So uh, in a case, if we have, uh, if player should use uh, blade to remove part of digit, so he, he wants to convert in a birth date eight to three, 
she, he or she basically needs to remove half of eight. But if he will remove anything that is marked red, then it is obviously uh, a mistake. But if he uh, removes something that is uh, that is not green or red, so he is blue, uh, is black, has has no color, then uh, basically game ignore it because player can scratch a little bit card. I mean, game calculate changes on black pixels, and uh, player would need to make like lots of them to fail the game. So we have like visual data. We know how to transform them to numbers after preprocessing. And now, with numbers, could we actually make real code right now, use these numbers? Yes, we could, but it is not a good solution, not a good solution. We tried it for one year and it was like total failure. Uh, because if you need uh, to have lots of numbers if your code it's bad from programming point of view. And if you decide, decide to make, uh, not have magic numbers and make lots of variables, then it is not so ugly, but it is too complicated for more, most of us. So we figured out something really simple. Let's make here another step, another layer that is responsible for, from balance. So for every number, we have something that we call the grader, which basically change a number using some, uh, some balance that uh, the developer created first to a grade that can be basically not enough, not enough but may pass, perfect, slightly too much but may pass, and too much. So if we check if a uh, card is too burned, then we don't check, don't, don't write in code if uh, amount of green pixels is bigger than 5038. We just write here if uh, amount of uh, this, this color is more than, is, is perfect or, or, or one, one of these five values. So too, too much by can pass, too few but can pass, or perfect or, or cannot pass because too much or too low. And finally, here, if we have actually values like this, we can change it to category, which is simple word, which is enumeration, telling us what is, uh, what is the result of, uh, of players' actions. So, for example, in uh, this case of a tarot card, category can be like totally burned, but also, if player, we can write uh, here conditional logic, like if card is too scratched and too burnt and uh, too wet, then we can give it a category like totally destroyed, and we can use it in dialogue system. So if a player done something slightly wrong, he will have dialogue like, oh, hmm, it may pass, but oh, sorry, I don't accept. Or, may, or even he can use dialogue clever, in a clever way to pass even if it is not good enough. But if it is uh, like totally burned, destroyed, scratched, then category is totally destroyed and we can give him a dialogue like, are you crazy? What, what, what have you done? It is like this card doesn't exist anymore. So it is like our solution. And to sum up, if we have this, uh, this everything I have, uh, I have mentioned, then we basically use players' feedback. We, we ask players to play the game and then take output files of what they have done. And we can make unit tests. So basically we have small in-game editor tool that we can pass all these small files that players or testers or whoever have prepared to us and uh, use them before after every build for automatic testing if, uh, if it still works. And that, as you can see, it's, it's quite simple. We have like uh, what have player created, how it should be evaluated and how, how it was actually evaluated. So basically it's, it's like the simple solution for quite complex task. I need to say that 
I mean, it may look totally simple, but it, it took us years, and I need to tell that this solution wouldn't exist without my team, so on the end, I would like to say them. Thank you, guys. If anyone would have any questions, I'm here for you. Yep. Yeah, I can give you mine. I don't need it anymore. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, hi, so I didn't get one thing. Uh, like, uh, so basically, you like uh, calculate the amount of good and bad pixels, right, uh, uh, on an image, and then you said that uh, instead of doing like this condition, if the amount of good pixels is greater than than something, you did mm -hmm. this like grader thing. But yep. how exactly does does the grader work? Like how does it uh, like translate the amount of good pixels into mm -hmm. the category? Doesn't it like essentially work in a way that if the okay. amount of good pixels is greater than then give the category of like the good enough or something? Uh, I need to ask you a question. Are you a programmer or a designer? Programmer. Fantastic. So, uh, so we will understand what, what, what I... Uh, so basically we wanted to have something that is like congruent. So we have made like class that, that is greater and it contains encapsulated like five magic numbers telling us how, many, how much it is totally too much, how much it is like you know, these this five, five values I have uh, mentioned. So if you have uh, five grades, then you have one, two, three, four, actually, sorry, four numbers telling you, telling you what is the balance. And we have uh, exact same numbers for every, every number in our game. So uh, it is like we, we could take them from code to a list or a dictionary. So basically, we don't need to write uh, any number in code, but basically every number that we use in game. So if I would uh, make a hairdresser simulator, then I could have like numbers like how much uh, hair was cut in in a proper. It is too long word. We in bad uh, bad places basically. Uh, it could be one number. Another number if uh, if color was changed in different way the, that, that somebody was asking. And I could have like 20 such numbers. And then instead of putting for, for 20 numbers, I would need to have like 20 graders. So four times no more magic numbers in code. But instead of that, instead of putting it in code, I can say the in code that every number has its grader and there is a list of graders uh, visible in Inspector Unity, in, for example, and I ask uh, where is he, did that guy to fill the numbers, and uh, you know, and then it works. And uh, how exactly, like, do you calculate the, the the numbers themselves? Like, you do it like kind of by hand, or you kind yeah, of uh, kind of uh, decide on some like percentage, or? The easiest way is to prepare like lots of. Uh, Automated, uh, automatic tests that will fail on start, like everything. So you make made like 20 tests. So we just, uh, we accept on beginning that our grading system doesn't work, but we play the game and prepare like, like 20 various tests and say that, yeah, this should pass, this should not pass, this should have that category, this should have this category, and this is totally crazy. So let's give him a uh, category totally crazy. And then uh, we try to find the magic numbers just to make basically every, every bulb uh, above, uh, above unit tests mark green. And we, if we are closed, then we basically start calculate why, why the hell is it not working. But usually it's like, uh, yeah, the, the more you test, the, the easy is to basically guess correct numbers. OK, thank you. I'm glad you asked. Do anybody else have such a good question? OK, 
Okay. Uh, I have a question. Uh, did somehow uh, work in uh, Forger Craft uh, influence um, your other games? I mean, this, uh, this solution in Forger Craft, did it somehow forge, uh, I mean, uh, influence, for example, House Flipper and uh, this case that you said before with these rooms and calculations and uh, evaluation of uh, price? Well, I hope yes. I am not sure. I mean, House Flipper evaluation in House, House Flipper 1 was made before this game, actually. So, like, it was like fundaments of this, this solution. Uh, but uh, right now, I can tell you that uh, there were at least some code lines that were uh, changed or improved uh, thanks, to, thanks to this project because, you know, we are like working on in the same building, everyone, everyone is talking about everything. And I'm glad to tell that we have like uh, at least third part company here. So hopefully some developers hear what I'm telling and in House Flipper too, it might be useful or not. Some concepts may be useful, I hope. So um, it is not like a life changer for a House Flipper, but actually if I think about how long we were struggling uh, with making this system in House Flipper 1, then I believe that uh, it's quite possible that such approach will al at least a little bit improve uh, House Flipper 2. Okay, so we can expect some kind of uh, evaluation and this kind of uh, stuff in House Flipper 2, right? I would be totally glad. I'm not, you know, uh, we, I'm, I'm the CEO of the company, but it is not like uh, I'm the god of the company and I tell you, code it this way. If somebody is coding it, he chooses the way how, how, he, how he likes to, how he prefers to do that. You see, guy will be in front of you. He's very happy that he has this possibility. So I can just uh, keep my fingers crossed. Of how, how do you tell that? Um, I hope that it will be useful, and or at least some concepts of it will be useful. Uh, I can prom I can't promise it, but how cool would it be in House Flipper if you if we finally could easily add situation that if somebody puts like tons of toilet papers or, or closets or, or crazy stuff somewhere, then we can we could basically add some. Some jokes, some, some, some funny answers from it. It would bring, in my opinion, a lot of life to the game. So I hope it will be used. Okay, uh, sounds good. Thank you for the answer. Thank you very much for the question. Do we have the third question here? Please, please. Oh, we, we, got, we got one here in front. Um, so, um, as a designer, like at what point there are just too many numbers to check to like see if something is counterfeit, counterfeit or not? Hmm. As a designer, you mean how many numbers do we use? Yeah. Or yeah, because I I I just mm -hmm. suppose like there are like forty different numbers that you check, and it's just overwhelming. Well, the human brain just to balance everything out. Yeah, it would be totally uh, overwhelming if these things would be uh, connected with each other. But actually, if uh, you have a situation like player can do lots of crazy things and uh, they are not connected. So let's imagine that I would like to um, Counterfeit the uh, the banknote, the ten 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 dollars banknote, for example, bill. Uh, then, if I have uh, my full set of tools, which we don't have yet in our game, to be honest, but if I if we would have a possibility to use everything, to use fire, to to use paint, to use to use everything, then uh, you need to use like actually very small amount of uh, uh, proper tools to make it properly. It can be few uh, various sets, but for example, we will have one magic number for amount of fire that you can use. If the bill is totally burnt out, then you fail. 
another magic number for amount of paint that somebody has used or, or color or actually in these cases we we didn't have like like really lots of uh, uh, these cases the, these three levels are quite simple so we were using like uh, like about five i believe five uh, mm, five numbers and for each of them we need to have like this four numbers to have gr to distinguish it to, to grades so it was like 20 20 numbers it's uh, I mean, it would be complicated if we wouldn't have this unit tests things. But, but if you can, if you can easily test it, then it works surprisingly good. And I believe that we never had situation like that we needed more than one day to balance something. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your question. Oh, once more, once more. Um, when you showed the maps of uh, the work done by the player was either good or bad, then mentioned um, the map, the, the one with the black screen and red text, I think is perfect, this one too. Uh, and it showed which areas you want players to you know, modify and, and uh, which not. Mm -hmm. And then also later you mentioned you've got unit tests that go through um, different cases, uh, this one should be bad, this one should be good, and you adjust your system mm -hmm. to that. Uh, have you thought about using artificial intelligence for that? Because it very much reminds me of this, uh, like the probabilistic maps um, and uh, loads of cases that we know this should be good. So the AI could treat this as an example of a good one, and so he could create those maps uh, for the system and, and use it later on. Okay, so once more, what, what exactly was the, the question? question is, have you thought of using AI, artificial intelligence? Mm. You know what, I, I totally see your point, but uh, I am like, I'm, I don't feel as secure if I use AI too much. I mean, I have uh, worked a lot with uh, things like neural networks. I, I was studying informatics in uh, medicine, so we were like uh, the, the best possible, this was the best possible way to place to learn neural networks and things like that. And I know that they are totally awesome when they work. But if they don't work, then it is AI. You don't. It's like right now you have like uh, all this great um, image generation AIs. So you you, you probably has have, have used at least uh, Mid Journey or something, and it is totally great. These images are perfect when they work. But sometimes you write something and you have uh, like total bullshit, something that you cannot use for anything. So um, I believe that. For some crazy reason, in video games, people tend to use very simple AI. In most cases, it's more like uh, more like state machines than anything else. And I was actually actively looking for examples of uh, using more modern AI, and I totally faint, failed. I know that neural networks was were used by uh, Peter Molino in Black and White. And this is, this is like the only case of game where, where it, is, it was used in a popular game I, I've ever found. So uh, I believe that uh, if for somebody it would be his primary tool, then such, such a solution could be great. But for me, I like things to be as simple as possible. But there is an exception. Because I, I, I mentioned that... Uh, on the beginning, I, I mentioned that uh, everything should be simple to explain, but it is not. Uh, it's, it is not meant to be simple to explain how code looks like. It should be the requirements, the the way of uh, what is good, what is bad, should be easy to e explain. So I actually had situations when uh, in a, in my game dev career when I had a simple pro problem that looked as a mathematical problem. So I went to mathematical analyst and he gives me equation for like three pages of texts. 
So it, it was like totally crazy. I didn't understood anything. But then I've used it in code and I just looked and suddenly it works. So uh, basically, if you have proper tests and can prove that something works, then using AI or complicated mathematic equations can be totally great for you. But please remember about text and please be prepared that if such, co such a complicated thing doesn't work, then you need to just throw it out and uh, look for something different. Okay, thank you. That, that answers, I think. Thank you very much. Was it our last question or do we have one more person? Five seconds. Okay, thank you.